The arrival of Destiny 2's beta on PC provides a new benchmarking opportunity for GPUs and CPUs and will allow us to plot performance uplift once the final game ships. Aside from being a popular beta, we also want to know if Bungie, AMD, and Nvidia work to further improve performance in the final stretch of time prior to the official October 24th release date. For now, we're conducting an exploratory look at multiplayer versus single player test patterns and results for D2, quality settings, and multiple resolution testing. Before that, we partnered with LastPass to bring you this video. LastPass is a password manager that helps generate random passwords for each account, ensuring unique passwords for every login. LastPass strengthens account security so that you're no longer using the same password for multiple sites. Learn more at the link below. We front-loaded this content with research done on Destiny 2 to determine the best test patterns that are repeatable and reliable and easy to execute and all of that. So part of this was conducting tests in multiplayer and single player in the beginning of the game where we wanted to benchmark in single player later in the game and ran tests across the entire 20 minute or so tutorial campaign that it ships with to determine how performance scales later to make sure there's not just some early on really heavy performance hit or really light performance hit in the game. And then also how does that compare to multiplayer to make sure we're looking at a realistic scenario. So we've looked at all of that. Couple of things here. First of all, this is a beta. Everything is subject to change. Uh, they have about a month or so until the game finally ships, maybe a month and a half. That means that things can change. MSAA in particular, as noted by Bungie themselves, is still under active development and is a work in progress. So we've actually not used it for this testing for that reason. But that just, it goes to show that this game is under development, everything's beta, these results pertain to beta and the beta performance. On the driver side, NVIDIA has game ready drivers out, so we use those. AMD has 17.8.2, which is what we used. We asked them what to use and that's what they recommended. And AMD may push more drivers later, probably closer to the official launch of the game, at which point we'll revisit it and be able to plot the performance uplift from the beta to the final version and then hopefully find some any, any uh, visual differences that may exist as well. So that's what this is for. This allows us to see how the game improves, how the drivers improve, things like that. And in the very least, satisfy an immediate interest in how the beta is performing on different hardware. We're starting with GPUs today. We have CPU benchmarks as well. Those will go live not too long after this video. So subscribe for that if you're interested. But let's get straight into the research part of this before we get to the comparative benchmarks. First of all, the big question was how well multiplayer and the reality of frame rate and multiplayer is reflected by single player if we wanted to run single player benchmarks because they're more repeatable and easier to do without having to wait for matches and maps. Uh, and also how this compares to a session over say 20 minutes or even five minutes, we've got to log that long as well. So this was done with a 1080 Ti SC2 at 4K and highest settings at first. We did this across a spread of multiple settings and cards, and we'll look at comparative benchmarks next where we set all the same configurations for everything so that it's properly comparative. But first we want to define what works for a benchmark. This first table shows each spot measurement against one another, then again the final benchmarking course. Overall, our FPS range is consistent. There's one lower FPS number out of all of these, which occurred in a densely packed city street area with complex geometry. We only saw this FPS dip one time during the campaign, and it seemed tied to that specific zone when there was heavy combat in a geometrically complex area. Averaging the spot checks across the entire 20 minute session, we end up at 51 FPS average, 45 1% lows, and 41 FPS 0.1% lows, which represent our frame times in a converted FPS metric. Comparatively, our chosen benchmark course, selected for its accurate repetition, ended up at 55 FPS average, 48 1% lows, and 47.5 0.1% lows. These numbers are remarkably close and show that, in the very least, our benchmarking method is representative of the entirety of the beta intro campaign at these settings with this card. Let's look at how this compares to competitive multiplayer matches. Taking spot measurements across several multiplayer sessions wherein we actually tried to compete and play the game properly on the Midtown map, we end up with this new table of results. Let's put this next to the single player results for comparison. The range is 53 to 57 FPS average, and averaging all the spot checks puts us at 54.5 with 1% lows at 46, and 43 FPS 0.1% lows. These are close enough that single player benchmarking looks accurate to multiplayer performance in the beta state of the game, 
with this particular configuration. To get a broader sense of scalability across the game's various maps and game modes, here's an MSI GTX 1050 Ti OC edition at 1080p and high settings. Our benchmark course outputs a frame rate of 70 FPS average, with lows at 54.71% and 53.701%. Compared to a pair of multiplayer matches on Midtown once again, we see frame rates of 74 average, 63.1%, and 59.0.1%. The difference is approximately 6%. Considering the trade-off is significantly more reproducible results, that's really not too bad. You'd see a bigger range of variance in a game like Battlefield with 64 players, although it's possible that Destiny 2's final iteration could show greater swings across other maps and game modes. We'll have to reserve judgment on that aspect until it fully ships. And here's the last round of exploratory tests conducted on the RX 580, which were run as we were finalizing its comparative results shown momentarily. At 1080p and with highest settings, our benchmark output had us at 85 FPS average, 66 FPS 1% lows, and 62 FPS 0.1% lows. As a reminder, we're using FXAA here. Multiplayer testing put our range between 67 and 88 FPS, which is huge and largely demonstrates why multiplayer testing is difficult to do accurately and averages out to 79 fps average 66 fps 1 percent lows and 62 fps 0.1 percent lows still reasonably close with the final benchmark output averaging a bit higher than multiplayer though there's so much range in multiplayer results that we'd have to run another dozen or two times to get a better idea of the average and now that we've gone through this we know that the game is remarkably consistent in its performance across single player and multiplayer and across multiple levels of single player and even multiple test durations. We tested at a intervals of one minute, five minutes, 20 minutes, and so on with breaks when there were loading screens in between and saw that the averages were pretty much the same. Aside from that one zone, which was really geometrically complex, but we ended up not testing there for the final benchmark because one, it was in a weird spot of the game and two, it didn't match up with the rest of the testing. So the next thing to note, before the comparative section, there is a 200 FPS cap on Destiny 2, so it is not unlimited or unrestrained in the purest sense of the word, but basically is. And this 200 FPS cap means that as we approach the upper limit of frame rate, the cards that exceed 200 FPS will end up locked to 200 FPS and therefore will produce lower averages as a result. So if you could exceed 200, obviously the averages would be dragged upward. To keep that in mind, this mostly, well, actually only affects the 1080 Ti for the most part, but it's worth noting. As always, we can also only speak to the results that we've encountered, discovered, tested here, and this is a beta game. Testing leaves a lot of room for different results if you change the settings. We have a part at the end of this video talking about a few settings in particular that were significantly impacting results. So depending on if people turn those on or off, you'll see major swings in performance. And that, of course, matters just as much as the hardware does. Getting into comparative benchmarks between the GPUs now, we open with 1080p at the highest settings with FXAA bypassing MSAA as it has known issues in Bungie's bug log. And it's a work in progress with MSAA. Destiny 2 Beta proves playable on most hardware at 1080p, even with the highest settings enabled. The 1080 Ti SC2 chart tops here unsurprisingly with a 168 FPS average and frame times consistently represented and 123 FPS 1% and 94 FPS 0.1%. We're bumping into the 200 FPS cap here, so that is going to be a bit lower than if there were no cap. Vega 64 stock lands at 123 FPS average, trailing the GTX 1080 FTW by about 17% and effectively tying the GTX 1070 SC. Note again that AMD's driver situation may yet mature for this game, so we can only speak to these results as of the beta with the 17.8.2 drivers. We'll revisit closer to full launch. As of now, Vega 64 ties the 1070, and our Vega 56 hybrid mod isn't far behind, at about a 6% deficit to the Vega 64 reference card. The MSI GTX 1066GB card operated a 93fps average, planting it ahead of the 970 SSC and a fair bit behind the 1070 and RX Vega 56. The many GTX 970 owners can rest assured knowing that their card is still plenty usable for the highest settings at 1080p, which makes sense, as Bungie did officially recommend the card in the recommended specs listing. The RX 580 performs similarly to the GTX 970, which means that overclocked RX 480 owners can expect comparable results to the RX 580 in the Destiny 2 beta, just a bit behind for stock clocks. The RX 570 follows AMD's trend of showing clock speeds can account for CU deficits, as the 570's performance would pull close to the 580's performance when overclocked. Finally, the GTX 1050 Ti and RX 560 cards 
would benefit from a mixture of high and highest settings if at 1080p as they begin to drag down below the 60 FPS threshold. Speaking of dropping settings, here's 1080p with high settings. The RX 560 improves by about 10 FPS or 26%, and the MSI GTX 1050 Ti improves by 22%, climbing to 70 FPS average. Remember, we're roughly plus or minus 6% to multiplayer performance depending on settings, maps, things like that, so we're in good company at this point. This test was more for these lower end cards. Let's move it along to the higher end. With 1440p resolution and the highest graphic settings and FXAA, the 1080 Ti is knocked down from its frame rate cap bumping numbers to 105 FPS average, losing about 38% from the 1080p resolution. Things are still plenty playable though, scaling reasonably through the GTX 1080 at 82 FPS and Vega 64 at conveniently 64 FPS. If Illuminati isn't yet confirmed, consider also that the GTX 1080 Ti leads Vega 64 by 64%. Jokes aside, RX Vega 64 is roughly tied with the GTX 1070, but the Vega 64 card exhibits worse frame time consistency. This is at least partly a driver side issue, seeing as the performance here deviates from Vega's norm of being closer to 1080 performance in other games. We'll check back once AMD pushes another update, likely closer to launch. Here's a look at the frame time plot of Vega 64 and the GTX 1080 FTW, showing the 1080 FTW's more consistent frame time output. Remember, with frame times, it's not just that higher is worse, but that more variance is worse. You want the flattest line possible, ideally closest to the interval of your display. Alternatively, here's a Vega 56 frame time plot compared to the GTX 1070's frame times, showing a similar outcome. Back to the 1440p highest chart for a moment though, we see that performance starts falling harder at the GTX 1066GB card, GTX 970, and RX 580 8GB card. Players more sensitive to frame rate may want to drop settings or resolution at this point. Here's a look at the dropped settings option, just to see how many more frames we can get out of going to high. There's more room below this option of course, but high and highest look close enough that it's not a huge loss to quote downgrade. Some cards are dropped from this chart as they were doing just fine at highest. The GTX 1080 FTW runs an average FPS of 126 now and could hit 1440p with 144Hz if dropping settings further, though the 1080 Ti does this more readily. Vega 64 operates an average FPS of 106 with frame times reasonably consistent in this particular scenario. It seems that Vega 64 is more sensitive to one of the graphic settings in the highest preset, which is something we'll explore later on in this video, but also more as the game iterates. With high frame times improved to a point of being consistent enough that most users won't complain, though average FPS does need to climb closer to the 1080 to remain at least halfway competitive. Either way, here's a frame time plot of the 1080 and Vega 64, showing improvement on Vega 64 versus with highest settings. We're stuck in a wait and see cycle on Vega right now, with the present setting being wait to see if the new drivers ship and improve things. As for the other cards, back to the 1440p high chart, performance remains above 60 FPS across the board with low end frame time performance also reasonably boosted. All these devices could handle this configuration for the most part, perhaps with the RX 570 needing a slight settings reduction to ensure a high baseline and more variable multiplayer play. One item of note, the RX 580 8GB card improved from 38 FPS average at highest to 75 average at high, which is nearly exactly a two times performance leap. The GTX 1066GB card saw a leap of 62% from highest to high, which, although not as impressive, is still a massive jump when considering the visual quality difference, i.e. minimal. If using AMD hardware, it's becoming clear that running at high settings is preferable to highest, and after we get through the rest of these charts, we'll look at the impact of SSAO on performance to determine if that's the culprit for the big hit these cards are taking. Here's 4K with the highest graphics settings and FXAA. We only have a few cards here, go figure it's intensive and see that the GTX 1080 Ti SE2 is playing decently, but not as well as we'd like. Our multiplayer match has had us at about 55 FPS average in this configuration, but dropping a few settings to high would help improve to a more playable 4K level. The GTX 1080 non-Ti and Vega 64 are both having trouble with these settings. Here's the last of the comparative charts. High is more playable at 4K, especially with the 1080 Ti SE2 seeing an immense performance uplift of 71% from highest, and the Vega 64 card, again, nearly doubling in its performance. The highest preset is clearly taxing in ways which may not be appreciated, particularly in multiplayer matches, when compared to the frame rate reduction and exchange. This is true for both Nvidia and AMD hardware, but is more noticeable at 4K, probably because of the higher pixel count. There's clearly a large performance leap in some of the spot checks when jumping between high and highest settings. With Nvidia hardware, we're seeing 60 to 70%, with the GTX 1060 in some of these tests, 
With AMD hardware, we're seeing 90 to 100%, a 2x increase, and saw the benchmarks by going down to high from highest. This is something we'll explore more in a moment, but AMD's frame time performance particularly and markedly improves when going to the high setting, where in highest, it doesn't really do too well to compete with NVIDIA. In high, it's really not bad. So just, if you're an AMD owner, take note. You'll probably want, at least in the beta for however long is left of it at this point, you'll want to use high rather than highest if you're having issues with frame times, if you're seeing stuttering, for instance, or if you're just not happy with the frame rate. Things may change as the game and drivers mature, but this is what we know for now. In the interim, there's clearly a benefit moving between settings. So let's take a look at some of those, specifically with the RX 580, and figure out which set of graphics options has the biggest impact. This chart shows the RX 580 8GB card at 1440p using highest FXAA as a baseline and the high preset as our target number, which is significantly higher in performance. We toggled a few settings between highest and high, ultimately finding that depth of field settings are responsible for about a 38% performance hit on their own, as switching to high boosts FPS from 38 to 62 average between the highest and the high depth of field configurations. 3D ambient occlusion is also responsible for about 13% of the performance hit on its own, moving us to 44 FPS from 38 FPS average. If you'd like to play on highest settings without sacrificing too much performance, these are the two options immediately worth tweaking. They seem to presently impact AMD the most noticeably, including the Vega cards and the RX 500 series that we tested here. And all of that should give a pretty good idea of a few key things. First of all, because this is a beta, because drivers may change for both AMD and Nvidia, Destiny 2 may further develop, the thing to take away here, other than performance today, if you want to play today, is the Variance between multiplayer and single player will look again when the game launches, but for now it looks pretty consistent and that's a good thing for benchmarking purposes and if you want to compare single player performance. And then uh, the difference between graphic settings, particularly high and highest with the biggest gains coming out of dropping to high. There's a pretty big difference there. And quick side note, when talking about single player, we're really just talking about the uh, campaign it drops you into when you start the game Technically, that's still multiplayer, but it's a campaign, not competitive multiplayer. That's what we're going for here. So anyway, competitive multiplayer and the campaign are pretty close in performance. The cards in general at 1080p with high settings, everyone we tested was fairly playable at all over 60 FPS, I think, maybe exception of one. And uh, going up to 1080p highest, cut off a few of the lower end cards, but 1060, 580 and up could kind of do it. You might want to drop some settings on the lower ones. For the rest, as long as you're at high settings, you're probably okay for most of the modern cards. We didn't get to test the GTX 900 series or 300 series AMD cards for this one, but we'll consider them once the game properly launches and more drivers are out. But for now, that's your introductory look. As always, if you want to help out with this type of testing, you go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to donate directly and join our Discord for Patreon members. And then gamersnexus.squarespace.com to pick up a shirt like this one. This is the GN Graph logo shirt. Subscribe for more, especially the CPU benchmark coming soon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time. Aside from that one zone where it was really geometrically complex, but